before we get started i do want to make an apology sometimes the mic would cut off a little bit it didn't really start until like the 35 minute mark and then it kind of messed up a little here and there but 90 percent of this episode is without issues enjoy what is up ladies and gentlemen this is the first episode of the two minute drill hopefully you get the pun behind our name the men is in quotes because we're two men just figuring this whole thing out as to how we're going to keep y'all entertained for maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes. Who knows how long these will go. Um, we're going to try to cap them out at about 45 minutes, 60 minutes, just so we don't bore y'all to death. I am Hunter Gonzalez. With me, as always, is... I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, Gabe Cornwall. Perfect. So, Gabe... Let's give the people the intro. Um, talk to me. Who is Gabe? Well, not, not really to me. Talk to the people. Who is Gabe? And then I'll talk to them as to who I am. Well, I am. I've been. I'm 26 years old and I've been a football fan. I've been a football fan since probably 98. But I didn't really get into the Patriots until two nine. Uh, 2005 ish. Like as soon as the Patriots were done winning the three Super Bowls, I was became a fan. I didn't, get to, did. didn't get to experience any of that. Can't so, complain. so why why football? Why not basketball? Why not baseball? Why football? Honestly, the reason why I started to love football was I think it was Madden '98. I used to play that with my dad. Okay. And he would always kill me. And, uh, what, what team did he use? Was he the Broncos? He was the, I, I believe he was a Cowboys or the Bucks. He grew up in Florida, so he okay. uh, he liked the Bucks. But he was Man, either one of those teams. I couldn't even tell you seriously. I couldn't tell you a single. Maybe in '98 they would have had. Um, oh man, I can't think of. He was the second wide receiver on the Cowboys roster when they were winning the super bowls in the 90s i can't think of his name the life of me right now but i couldn't tell you a single bucks player back then i the cowboys i could but i couldn't tell you a single bucks player that, that's I, that's gonna honestly <laughs> into, i only know like five bucks players now and that's two of them were used to be at patriots hold on i, I gotta look okay john lynch was there warwick dunn how did i forget the oh Warwick done warren Sa okay never mind they they weren't they weren't bad let's let's well, I mean, of course they weren't bad. They went to didn't they go to the Super Bowl like? I think early? it was 2000, 2000, 2001 that they went when they had um, Rondé and all of them. It was a it was a great it was, roster. Yeah, it was, I think I believe it was two thousand. It was two thousand one was the Patriots. Two thousand one, so, two thousand two, two thousand four. Here, here's um, no two thousand. They lost in the wild card. Two thousand one. Oh. They lost in the wild card. Two thousand two oh. was when was when they won it all. Okay, so in between um, the Patriots. Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. In, in between the Patriots. So that's pretty cool. Um, I know we were talking off air today. It's going to be hard not to let that Tom Brady fandom come out. I, I know that. It's, <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard for all y'all Patriot fans to not let that stuff come out. Hey, you talk to a lot of Patriots fans now and they hate Tom Brady. I, I know. Love. My, I, so the last Super Bowl the Patriots won, which was what, two years ago? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I have a real good friend of mine who's a huge Patriot fan. And this dude's been a Patriot fan for literally his entire life and he's probably 20 i think jake's 25 26 jake if you're listening to this shout out to you by the way but um he's been a huge patriot fan for forever and just like i told you earlier today it is a um i just don't talk to him when the, when the super bowl is going on or when the playoffs are going on i just say like hey jake how you doing he tells me great great perfect i don't feel like talking about football with you because y'all patriot fans are uh it, I wouldn't even say Patriot fans. So I'm a huge Celtic fan. So I feel like I have the right to say this. Like y'all have Boston sports fans feel it's their God given right to like compete and win a championship every year. Compete in championships. <laughs> there, there, there it is, right there. Okay, so it's it's always a little um, it's always a little fun just to um, just see how Patriot fans are um, in February. I don't even want to say in January. It really, I mean, the season starts for Patriot fans in January um, and it ends in February always. I mean, the thing is, is, like the Patriots were the laughing stock of the NFL for like thirty years. They were no one cared about them at all until Bill oh. Belichick comes, and then Tom Brady surprises surprises the world with a that Super Bowl run. 
Exactly, exactly. They had a few good years in the 80s when my Bears killed them. Uh, oh, my years. goodness. They got sure. destroyed versus the Packers yes. and the Bears. Yep. So, uh, I the guess Bears, like, of... demolished that team. It wasn't even, yep. that, like, didn't they, they lost by, like, 20-plus points, right? I, I think the final score in, in that 1985 Super Bowl, hold on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I listened to someone else, and uh, they always they always talk about the 85 team versus a 2007 Patriots team. So it was 46 10. I was going to say 56 10. Yeah, it was 46 10. Yeah, that's just, that's crazy. I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at the box score right now. So yeah, it was, I, okay, truthfully, it was 46 to 3 because the Patriots scored, um, they scored a touchdown with, uh, let's find out. Can't really figure this out real Probably quick. what, 10 seconds left? Uh, okay, full play by play. I'm looking at the fours. I'm... Okay, so okay, no, no, actually, it was it was with 13:35 left in the fourth. Okay, I can I can live with that. And yeah. the Bears had a, had a safety with 5:42 left, so it was 46 to 10 was the final score. But all that That's... to say, after that, the Patriots just yeah. I mean, th- I mean, that was like the last like kind of thing. Good year. I mean, yeah, until much. because even with Bledsoe, they never did great. They were better. Yep, but they were never like amazing, and and that's it's funny because um, so when I started loving the Bears, I'll, I'll kind of segue that into to why I love the Bears. So I jumped on the bandwagons of all the teams that were doing really good in the two thousand one two two thousand two thousand one um, uh, sports season, and I believe it was in two thousand two. Craig Krenzel from Ohio State was the Bears quarterback. I couldn't tell you another player on that team, but I loved Craig Krenzel, and I loved that he took them to the NFC. It was either the divisional round or the championship, and um, he got killed. I forget who they played. Yeah, I can't remember who they played, um, but they got killed, and it's just been brutal times ever since. 2006, when they went to the uh, Super Bowl, I will never forget Devin Hester returning the opening kickoff, 108 yards. I will never forget that. Um, I was screaming. I, I was at the time, I think I was, uh, I was probably 11 or 12. Um, I, I told my dad, I'm, I'm like 11 or 12, but I'm screaming in my, in my pillow. Cause it was going on at like eight o'clock at night. And I had just had a little sister who was born and I'm screaming in my pillow. Oh my God, the bears are going to win this. And my dad's like, dude, there's still 59 minutes left in this, in this game. You need to, you need to relax. And then we all know what happened. Peyton just absolutely destroyed them. Rex Grossman was awful. And we've been in um, the doldrums ever since. We've had a few good years here and there, but um, yeah, don't, don't even get me don't don't get me going with the Bears. And really, that um, that kind of brings us to the next kind of our first before, question. Before, you will. before we change that, I, I was the biggest Bears fan that Super Bowl. I was yeah, I was like I wanted them to win so bad. You know, unbelievable. And I, the, I, like, I remember thinking just how bad they were. I mean, it was their defense. Their yeah. offense was horrific. Yeah. And, I mean, Rex Grossman. He was like, he, I mean, he was just he was the crutch of that team. Any other was, quarterback would have been a Super Bowl win. So I'm gonna look this up. 2005, 2006. I'll never forget that Devin Hester return. That's I mean so iconic. And he, he and he, he looks himself he looks at himself in the jumbo trying to see he's running and he smiles. Yeah, I mean it, it, that was that was truly one of um I mean it was just oh man, that, that that was truthfully that may go down as one of my favorite sports memories of all time. I mean I've got I've got several up there, but but truthfully, because that's just so even though the Bears got absolutely killed, um that that's just such a just a memorable thing. How often is it that that happens? And, and yeah, it was, it was just great. I mean, so I'm looking, they lost 29, 17, excuse me. It was Rex Grossman. And then I guarantee you 99.9% of people could not tell you another player on that offense. Uh, Mushin Muhammad was their best receiver at the time. Then Thomas Jones, he was a really good running back. Your... He had just run for 1200 yards. Um, but it was, it was the defense. That defense was absolutely incredible. I feel um, like even with a, Average quarterback, they would have won. Like, which Grossman could not get the ball to anyone. So, so th- this year he had he had 3,200 3, yards, twenty three touchdowns, and I forgot this, but he was so bad about turning the ball over. Twenty interceptions. Didn't he turn the and, ball over like three times in that Super Bowl? 
I believe he did. I think it was like three or four, if I'm remembering right. And it, it was it was just bad. Um, let me let me look. So I mean, yeah, you're right that the Bears got it to that Super Bowl just because of the defense. It, it was their it was their defense. I mean that that was that was so. So the, the, the nail in the coffin, Kelvin Hayden had a 56-yard interception return for touchdown um, in the fourth quarter with 11.44 left. That put the Colts up 29-17. So it was 22-17. Still, still a close game. Um, and, yeah, we just – so the Bears turned the ball over five times, um, two interceptions and three fumbles. I believe Rex Grossman had a couple fumbles. Yeah, here it is. He had a couple fumbles. A and couple. he lost one. Cedric Benson, rest in peace to him. He lost one. Um, yeah, don't, don't even get me going. So I guess that begs the question, and this is, this is the first question of the two-minute drill. <sighs> what's going what's gonna to happen in the NFL this year, man? I mean, I personally think, like, hearing about all the like, uh, NBA players – Talking about how they're not playing and they're scared about like, they're going to do some kind of bubble. How are they going to do a bubble over like two thousand people? It's just it just seems impossible. So yep. I mean, the more this COVID goes around, the more I think that we're not going to have a season. Or if we do, it's going to be a very short season. Like I wouldn't be surprised just to have like division games plus like have like ten games total. I, I don't I don't disagree with you one bit. I mean, we've I was just talking to Tatum, my wife, about this earlier. Earlier today, actually, she she told me something. She said, hey, I'm really excited for for um, the NBA to get started. And I'll talk about the NBA until I'm blue in the face. It's my favorite sport um, over the past probably five, six years. It's become my favorite sport. Still love the NFL. Um, still won't miss any games on Sundays. But uh, the NBA is, is my that's my first love. And she asked me, she said, how are they doing that? And so I told her about the whole bubble concept and everything. And she was like, that it just, I think it sounds great. And, but you can touch, or you, we, we can talk about what the MLS did today or yesterday. FC Dallas, they, mm -hmm. they, pulled, they pulled out of it because it, the bubble concept is great in terms of keeping people out. But what happens if one person gets it? Well, Everybody can get it. Wasn't there like 10 players that got uh as a positive for COVID? I think it was like 10 or 11, yeah. I mean, so, that's, um, that's what's going to happen. And, and when push comes to shove, I mean, it, let's not so – let's just talk like like the, the Chiefs, for example, because they're, they're in the news right now paying Patrick Mahomes like $7 trillion. Um, if, if, if Patrick Mahomes catches the, the coronavirus, of course, regardless of if he has it really bad, regardless of if he has a, an asymptomatic or whatever it is, if he catches it, he can't play and the like the 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 society won't let him play and what happens he's going to catch it. he's going to give it to xyz person let's just say he doesn't give it to xyz person in the nfl with there only being 16 games in a year if you lose a couple games you're you're behind the eight ball and if he misses a couple games they're they're stuck with i i mean who's their backup quarterback is it still uh who who was last year um i have no one knows. I mean, he's, he played He played that one game or two games. Yeah, yeah. I think he played two games after he sprained Was it Luke season. McCown? No. Um, oh, my gosh. I should know this. Holy crap. I'm not too sure. I guess he got he, – whenever he hurt his knee on that QB sneak. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it was when he sprained his MCL. Oh, my God. I should remember that. Uh, Matt Moore. Okay. Oh, Matt Moore. So Matt, Matt Moore, he may not even still be a part of the team. Yeah, he, is he a part of the team? Yes, he still is a part of the team. So, I mean, like, what, you're rolling with Matt Moore, and that, that it just ain't going to cut it when, when push comes to shove in a 16-game schedule. And just like you said, that's if they even have a 16-game schedule. Um, I, I, I think I, – I don't know. I mean, I, I want to say – like the the business owner in me wants to say like oh no these billionaire owners are going to make this crap happen but like the 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 common sense person in me says like there's there's just no way i mean it, it's hard enough in the nba but i mean how many players are in the nba i mean so each team carries 15 and and they were they were allowed to carry 16 going into this um going into this um bubble so you have 16 by 30 what's that i mean 
with about 500. Five, hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's about 500. So, I mean, 500 or 2,000. Common sense says 500 is a whole hell of a lot easier to, to, to take care of than 2,000. So, um, I, I think we're... I think we're going to run into some issues, and I think a, a big thing will be what happens with training camp. I mean, training camps open in three weeks. I mean, it, it, if they open up, okay, great. But this coronavirus ain't going nowhere in three weeks, regardless of how you feel about it. It ain't just going to just up and disappear. Um, I, I think that, I, dude, I, I really don't know. I, I, I do like your thought process though with the with the ten game season and and having their the little asterisk by this season is really what what's going to happen, but. It's, uh, I, I always hate that just because it's like, I mean, they still did that. I mean, it's not like like th- one team played ten games and the other team played fifteen. I mean, everyone was still even. But you know, I mean, no matter no matter who wins, if they if they have a Super Bowl, no matter who wins, it's it's going to be a question mark. Absolutely, is is could they have done it without this? And and then that that what like I mean, oh, what were you going to say? Uh, one thing is like. How much I want the f- football season to be here, it, I think it's kind of it swings my bias a little bit to like, yeah, we're gonna have I a think season. That's everybody. I really do think mm-hmm. that's everybody. Just kinda like I was hoping the way to the season. I, I, was, I was talking to a client about this this morning, and and hopefully, Tommy, you're listening to this. Is he he basically was like, dude, I hope that this happens. And so, like, I think just like you said, like our biases want to get in the way of of what's truly going to happen and again right or wrong i'm not here to get into what the what the um what the uh, the legitimacy of it is or isn't but um it, it we, our bias is going to get in the way and the thing is is roger goodell i don't think anybody's going to sit here and say he's a he's a great commissioner but uh, he know he he's pretty good he, he he can be good he can be good but i mean, I mean he's, he's he knows that everybody wants there to be a season. He just knows mm-hmm. that. And so if in the public uh, court of opinion is you want a season, well, by God, he's going to do his damnedest to make sure that we get a season. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and, dude, I don't know. I might hate, hate, hate Roger Goodell. But, <laughs> hey, none of that hate goes to the owners, and that's kind of his job. I mean, it, it, his job is the shield. So exactly. I mean, he, he does a good job even though I hate him. And, uh, but like one thing, like even if the season starts, what happens if, say, a player gets COVID, he doesn't show a single sign, and then a week later they play a game, now he tests positive. I mean, they're going to be testing players probably daily, but I mean, once, once a t- player tests positive, the whole team 90% chance has, will get it. I mean, this exactly. is, there's two close exactly. to each other. Exactly. And, and that's what the, that's what the um, question mark is, is, is do you even run that risk? I mean, you have some people that say, yeah, just do it. And, and then you have some people that say, don't do it. And, and that's where you begin that thing is, is. That starts to get into legal issues whenever, it, if a player exactly. gets, say a player gets in and dies. Exactly. That, exactly. Is, that would, is what that happened. Kill the NFL. Exactly. So you, you there, there's just a lot of things that um, that are just question marks. And, and truthfully, I think that of course they have a, of course they have an idea of what they're going to do. They have a backup plan or their backup plan or their backup plan. But nobody really knows. I mean, nobody knows. We've been told different things by by. Not even I don't even want to say politicians, but like just the leaders uh, in, in at the top of everything of hey masks are good, masks aren't good. There's going to be sports, there's not going to be sports. There's going to be school, there's not going to be school. Harvard just shut down their school. It's all online this this whole 2020, 2021 year, um, and I think many schools are going to follow suit. And then that begs the question: Is are college sports going to be played in the fall? And if college sports aren't going to be played in the fall, and NFL plays in the fall, but People are going to then say the NFL is greedy and all. like it's just a huge issue that's that's literally never been seen before. That brings up another question: Is like what's going to happen to all the like people that were or seniors and stuff that wants to go play like go and enter the draft? What's going to happen with that, it all, is, all that? It is so funny you mentioned this. So again, the same client I asked this morning, I said, "So like, what does this mean?" So he's an athlete. 
he's a collegiate athlete. And I said, so what does this mean for your teammates or for your friends that, that, that were wanting to get drafted or would be drafted? Or let's just say you go and get drafted. What does this mean if your season, he's a, he's a fall sport player, what does it mean if your season is canceled? He said, well, they may push it back to spring. And I said, okay, well, let's just say that's canceled too. Like, what does this, what does that mean? And he, he told me, and it's something that I think only, only a person in this situation can say. And, and I completely, um, I agreed with him. I couldn't help but agree with him. He said, um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, and I, but I'm going to paraphrase. Basically, like, that's not, that's not what they're worried about. Like, the, when I say they, I mean, like, the commissioners of the mm. Big 12 and all that like they're not worried about Gabe Cornwall going and getting drafted tomorrow they're, they couldn't care less about Hunter Gonzalez getting drafted in April by the Dallas Cowboys or whatever and then that begs the question of why but, but, I mean another side thing is like that sure that might be fine for like the fourth fifth sixth seventh round players are you going to say that to your first round first. pick exactly <laughs> that's you're not... just trying to school a whole lot of money this year yeah I mean and, and that's Again, like that, that's there's just no we've never dealt with this. And then that that also begs the question. I, I and I was pulling this up while you were just talking is what does this do for the long term? Like, what are the long term ramifications? I'm talking simply from a financial sense, not at all from a health sense, because I'm not a doctor and I don't know, but and I don't even think the majority of doctors know, but from a financial sense, like, what does this do to the NFL salary cap? And you have you have all these guys that are that were banking on making their their big checks next year or even this year, and their teams were, let's just say, Patrick Mahomes, um, not really because he still has two years left on his deal, but Dak Prescott, let's say, or just Sean Watson, yeah, he, they can't go out and pay him even if they want to pay you forty five million a year. They can't do that because they don't know is the cap going to stay the same next year? Is it going to go down? And then a year later, is it going to go up or down? Is it going to stay the same? Like, what are the ramifications of that? I feel like if they have an NFL season, all all games, I feel like the cap would probably go up. Just because if football is the biggest sport that comes back, everyone will be watching. Oh, Even if they don't like football. Everything. Yeah. I mean, and how much money do you actually make from stadium tickets? I mean... You make good money, but their money is just like I was talking to the same client about this a couple of weeks ago. Is their money's in those TV deals? Yeah. I mean, CBS paying two hundred million dollars for the rights to the twenty twenty AFC games or whatever they pay, yeah. and yada yada. I mean, that that's where they're making their money, and they're making their money in the advertisements in between the commercial breaks and and all that stuff. And so, I, I think I don't I don't think you're wrong with saying that, but uh, but you also have to think from a and I say you in general. You have to think from a um, businessman sense because all these owners are businessmen. They're not just mm-hmm. lucked into money and won the lotto. Is that, uh, like uh, Mark, is it Mark Davis? <laughs> Pretty much. Good lord. Okay. But, <laughs> Mark Davis, uh, uh, he, uh, but, his but, dad was it or whatever. So, I mean, but but it's really just like these dudes are businessmen and they and they are, yes, they want to win. Duh. I mean, or otherwise they wouldn't be spending the kind of money they are. But they also want to make money. Well, let's be real. If it boils yeah. down to making a billion extra dollars or making it to the playoffs, they're going to choose the billion extra dollars. I don't want to speak for them, but I'll speak for them. I don't feel like that's completely true on every owner. I feel like Maybe some... every owner, there are some just fans. Because, Pratt, I mean, Jones. Like the, I mean, honestly, it's like the good teams, usually their owners are the ones that are like, I mean, they don't mind. They just want to win. Because, but, and then you have a lot of bad teams like the Jags. Do they really want to win? They don't put any money anywhere. And that, that's what people have always said about Shahid Khan is, is, is does he really want to win or does he, because he's, he's the owner of a Liverpool FC as well, as, <laughs> or does he just want to move that team to, to London yeah. and be like the first guy to do that crap? But, I mean, I, I just think it's... I don't like think... He, uh, what I was just going to say, I don't think they'll ever have a Lon- London team. You would have... Li- Six of that leave it like literally impossible. Unless they have like a railroad that's like supersonic <laughs> that can go I mean, across. Exactly. I mean, and, and that's there's the the logistics of that are just outrageous. There's just no mm-hmm. way that that will ever happen. And, and the NFL, I talked to another client about this several months ago. Is the NFL has tried Mexico 
they tried the NFL Europa back in the early 2000s, and that just as a developmental league, and I, I don't think like anybody, even the players' families, watch those. I mean, nobody watched it, nobody heard about it, um, and so so that I don't foresee that ever happening. But I, I just think at the end of the day, with this whole coronavirus stuff, is it it's just nobody knows. I mean, nobody knows. And to sit here and act like Roger Goodell knows as much as you and I do, I think that's a little bit asinine. He probably knows more than we do, but I mean, when push comes to shove, I don't, he doesn't know enough to sit here and say the salary mm-hmm. cap is going to go up next year. It's going to go down. I mean, I feel, and, I feel like the salary cap is, they're going to freeze it. That's what I feel like they'll do. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised with that just because, yeah, and, I mean, and that <laughs> brings up, we were talking about this right before we, we started is, is they're wanting to escrow or put, hold 35% of the player's salary cap or the player's earnings and, and escrow it. And it's, it's just, Players want to get paid as they should. I mean, nobody, you're not going to go to work for free for six months. No, I'm not going to do it. I mean, so you just have just these, this huge, just coronavirus is the top thing. And then there's a massive tree of just a multitude of other things that become, that become issues because of that. I mean, I, I, players just care about their money so much. That I, they would rather not play than give up the money. Absolutely, so right I mean, or wrong. Because, I mean, it makes sense though because, like, say a player does go out there and gets hurt. Now think, like, if it's Sean Watson, he goes out there, get, tears up his knee, can't run anymore. Is anyone going to sign a contract? Like, as much as they would have, absolutely not. No, he's going to be getting paid. Like, look at Cam Newton. He got hurt two years. Now he's getting paid. Guaranteed like 500k of a seven and a half million contract. It's like, I mean, the dude was an MVP, what 2015, five years ago. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's so it's, it's, and then that gets into a whole nother can of worms is why are NFL contracts not guaranteed? I know why, but then you get the NFL PA that that is questioning why are our contracts not guaranteed? Whereas MLB, you get Mike Trout, he just shows up for 12 years and makes $412 million. Um, not fault and go get your money, Mike. But, baseball uh, contracts are so crazy. Baseball contracts are, they're just absolutely insane, seriously. Um, but you mentioned Cam Newton. Dude, what are, what are your thoughts on on um, that? What are your thoughts on, shoot, any other any I mean, other contracts and any, any other uh, transactions that you can think of? I, w- I wrote down four contracts that I, f- I thought were kind of interesting. Are rookie contracts always guaranteed fully? So, no, I believe certain past a certain round they are, but um, they were guaranteed, but then they put in with Sam Bradford, they put in a cap to it. Mm -hmm. Um, But but no, I I believe they, like in a certain round, they're not. Well, I mean, in the first round, were they all guaranteed? I wasn't sure because uh, Jezrek Wills signed his four-year deal for 19.7 mil. and He was a number 10 overall pick. Uh, oh well, well, well. I mean, just to sign on the dotted line, the dude got twelve million dollars. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I guess the whole contract is guaranteed. So, yeah, I'm looking at yeah. this thing. Yeah, fully guaranteed. That's you know, I don't know. That's that's a great question. I should probably so let's just go look at Jordan Loves for example. So he signed July first. Is his fully guaranteed? Let's look. I should know this. It, it, his is fully guaranteed too. I feel like it yeah. wasn't always fully fully guaranteed though. I feel like they have it might, stickers I, and stuff. I, I, I think you're right. I, I do think you're right. I think it's just some players got fully guaranteed. So here's Brandon Ayuk. I think he was the 30th or 25th overall pick. He, his is fully guaranteed. Yeah, I think past, of course, after the first round, they're not they're not guaranteed. I mean, so so let's just look at Denzel Mims. I know he was in the second round. I think he was like 35. Let's look with the Jets. Let's look. Was he 35? I'm going to feel smart if he was 35. 59. I was wrong. Oh, you were way off. <laughs> so so, his, so his, his, his contract is four years. So he was, he was drafted in the second round. His contract is four years, $5.4 million, and only 2.36 is guaranteed. I say only. I mean, my gosh, I'd take 2.36 guaranteed right now. Um, yeah. But, that's always so skewed. It's like, I mean, that's a big number now, but. They took what, fifteen, Taxes. eighteen. Well, it's like 
It's like 15, oh, 18 years. Yeah, just to get to that point. And then taxes, agent fees, trying to like move. I mean, moving your family. Granted, I'm, not, all that I'm not saying it's not a lot. It's a lot of money no matter what. But, but, it, but it runs out quick. Mm -hmm. Especially because you, like, as soon as you get that contract, you have a lot of friends. And it's like friends that you never knew you had. Exactly. And that's no You're one reason exactly. why NFL team, uh, NFL players go broke. It, it, so I don't know if you ever watched it, but um, ESPN 30 for 30 did something probably, I want to say probably eight or nine years ago, truthfully. Um, and it was called, I think it was called Broke. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, it talked about Charles Barkley. It talked about a couple other guys. I can't even remember. And it basically just talked about just how quickly those dudes go broke. And, well, and, and it's, it's crazy. Did you watch that Trent Richardson, uh, 30 for 30? I mean, that's yep. the same thing. Like his friends just like his, I think his family stole it from him. I mean, he like well, bought them all houses with, uh, and stuff. That happens with all, because they'll hire these, they'll, they'll hire their, their friends who become their financial mm -hmm. advisors with no, no but, nothing. But do you think that's their fault? Or do you think that is NFL's fault? So the or Rams, sure both. They were, when they were under Jeff Fisher, when Jeff Fisher was in um, St. Louis, when they were still in St. Louis, he had a um, basically a, a rookie mandatory thing where they talked about finance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've actually always talked about this, and, it, and it's something that really um, should be talked about more is I, I don't want to blame the NFL, but I also don't not want to blame the NFL. Mm -hmm, exactly. Because the, there is, the, these kids are, are, I mean, hey, they're kids. Hey, they're 18, 19, 20 years old. 20 years old is typically what they are, 20, 21. Um, I'm not much older than that, but I can tell you that six years ago, five years ago, if I was given a million dollars, I probably am not going to invest it. I can, oh. In fact, I can assure you that. Zero uh, chance uh, I would spend it all. <laughs> It's exactly, and that's that's what ends up happening. You have your friends and your 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 mom's friends, brother's dog, aunt's uncle, and they all want to come. Hey, I, I babysat you one time. I told you you were a star. Where's my money? And and it's hard to tell people no when they're looking at your face, even if you want to tell them no. It's just hard. It's just kind of kind of common buyer and seller psychology that, that it's hard to tell them no. But especially family. Exactly, and, and you find these guys that are just taking advantage of. Let's call it. Um, and, and it's it's really sad, but um, I think when push comes to shove, is is nobody feels bad for him. I, I guess is what it boils down to. And as sad as that is, nobody feels bad for him. It's just a matter of they need to um, they need to just kind of they need to have the right people in their ears. Is what it boils down to. And recognize so you have your average NFL career that's that's two years, and that's just I wanted him to change. I think a lot of people did it. People thought the Saints. People thought the Cowboys. And when I say people thought the Cowboys, I really mean Cowboys fans. So Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys uh, fans think they're going to get everyone. If it's a free agent, oh, he's going to Cowboys. Earl Thomas, um, uh, Jamal Adams, Brady, uh, Brady. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's everyone. So many. Every uh, man, I talked about Jamal Adams Earl. actually wants to go to the Cowboys. He wants to go there because he grew up literally. Yeah. So I have clients. I have clients right by where he grew up. It is not, but three minutes from the star. Mm. It is this close to the star. I mean, like literally, he went to care or he went to Hebron. Hebron is right off of one. Like I said, just got an alert about Jadavion Clowney going back to the Seahawks. What are your thoughts on that? Like this. This is like live like breaking news type thing like it's looking like he's going back there man my first thing my first thought is like is he actually going to be healthy he's hurt every year i mean he has he has like his talent level is off the charts but he's been hurt i think every year besides maybe one and that year he had like 16 sacks or something i think that was the year he was an all pro mm -hmm. i mean he was he's a good player like, he's a monster i mean he's yeah, when he's healthy. But my favorite high school tape to watch is his. Because he's an absolute monster. He, he he looks like a pro in high school. I will never forget seeing his, his high school tape. 
and I was, I, so he's a couple years older than I am. And I remember seeing, because I used to always look at recruiting, it, it was not even, it wasn't even fair. Like, <laughs> he's matched up against a guy who's probably a relatively decently sized offensive tackle. I mean, he's not NFL size or anything. He's in high school. And he just murders him. I mean, like, just blows him back immediately off the ball. Just, okay, well, I mean, like, that's seriously one of those, like, down, set, hut, here you go, man, just kill my quarterback. <laughs> Like I'm, I don't even care, dude. Like I'm, I'm not I mean, even gonna run the risk of getting hurt. Like, dude, like, even whenever he's like down into his stance, you could like you, the second that you see a like film of him, you know who he is. You don't even need like you know how they put circles and stuff over the players. Yep, you don't even yep. need that. You know exactly who it is. He's, he's so outrageous. As a freshman, he was six three, two hundred pounds. <laughs> as as a freshman, as a freshman. I'm 26 and I can't even get to 200 pounds. He was he was 6'5", 255 his year of, of high school. 6'5", 255 or 265? 255. And wow. he ran 40 and 455. What a, what a tank. Absolute Super. unit. And then what the play that he's most famous for? Destroying that one co- uh, quarterback? The Michigan. It was the <laughs> Michigan running back. That wasn't. It was the Michigan. Was it? I the, think it was the, the one that he, he, the one that he made fumble. Yes, that that was. Uh, I think it was. I thought it was a okay, quarterback. So, okay, he, here's his here's his high school senior stats: 162 tackles, and high schoolers play. I, I believe it's 13. Is 29, 29 and a half sacks, 29 tackles for loss, 11 forced fumbles, scored five touchdowns on defense, leading his team to a 13 and two. 13-2 record. So he played 15 games, 160. He's a defensive end. A, a defensive end. And he has 162. Divide that by 15. That's 10.8 tackles a game. <laughs> so, so outrageous. It's, it's, an, it's absolutely insane. But, um, but, yeah, so... All that to say, I, I think that, that him staying um, in Seattle, I mean, Pete Carroll will be happy about that, but a lot of it doesn't cost. Um, and is it a one-year prove-it deal? And if it is, what is what's going to happen again? I hate to bring it up, beat a dead horse, but what's going to happen with coronavirus? Is he just going to mm-hmm. take a four-year long-term deal um, and take some less money? Or is he going to go out and bet on himself, get hurt like he always does, and then lose out on a bunch of money next year? That's just such a bad thing, like a bad thing to say, but it's so true. I mean, yeah, I mean been, you know, I'm right. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I, it depends on how much they're paying them. I mean, if they pay him 20 mil, it's going to be a waste. The, but there's, there's no way he's, because that was his initial asking mm-hmm. price in Seattle. I was like, get out of here. Yeah. And that was five months ago. I mean, there's no way. But if he gets 10 mil, I would be down with that. Absolutely. Even I would be down for. I'm, I was talking to another client about this a couple months back. I'd be down to pay him thirteen million dollars a year, a million dollars a game, and, and he goes out and he gets five, six, seven, eight sacks and takes away. And I think sacks are. He takes away. You, he, he, you think sacks are what? An overrated stat. I really oh, do. completely. Because there's a whole it's, lot of things. But, flashing numbers. That's all. Exactly. He goes out and get, he gets double teamed every play. I mean, of course he's hey. freaking Donald. Sometimes he gets triple team. Exactly. Exactly. And so, I mean, if he were to if he were to consistently command a double team, and let's just say you're running a, you got three other linemen, three linemen. Common sense says at least one of those guys, you you just set something up. If he gets triple teamed, you've got three linemen, and that's not even backers so forth. So, really good player. He just has to stay healthy. Yeah, I agree. And then, I mean, since he signed, uh, I mean, with Dak Prescott signing his uh, franchise tag, I mean, he's probably. I mean, wonder what wonder what he's thinking with COVID and stuff. You know, so that was so for all y'all listeners. I live, I live in a suburb of Dallas, so I I get some. Dallas takes, as opposed to I don't get Chicago take. 
so I don't know what's going on in the Chicago I do because I read. Y'all know what I mean. You're cutting, uh, up. You're cutting up again. So I don't get Chicago takes because I don't live in Chicago. But Dak Prescott, Dakota Prescott, I have gone back and forth with clients on this. And I will die on this hill. That man is worth no more than $32 million a year. Now, will he be paid more than $30, $32 million a year? Yes, because that's what, and if this is on video, you're going to see my quotes, the market dictates. I hate that. The market mm -hmm. can dictate a thousand square foot house is a billion dollars, but you're an idiot if you pay a billion dollars for a thousand square foot. Well, on the other side of that, if the Cowboys let him go, who are the Cowboys getting? Okay, so I, I, I've, I, Tommy, I know you're listening to this, man. You, you, you've heard, you're laughing because Gabe just asked a question you always ask. And I'm going to tell Gabe the exact thing I tell you every single time. Go out and find somebody. If you are that confident in Will McClay as your VP of player development or whatever his title is, Will McClay is basically the third highest guy in, in charge in the Cowboys organization under Stephen and Jerry. You have to be confident in your coaches. You got to be confident in your scouting. Department. You got to be confident in and possibly even building through free agency if the Cowboys do that again. Um, you have to be confident in. in who your guys are. I mean, trust that they're going to go out and find a good quarterback. Is he going to be as good as Dak Prescott? Maybe. Maybe. I don't not. I honestly don't think that Dak is that good. I think he's a slight, he's an average quarterback that doesn't turn the ball over too much. I think so. I, I don't, he's a top 10 quarterback, but, but top 10 quarterback is, that's a very, that sounds a lot sexier than what it is because there's a lot of bad quarterbacks in the NFL, right? A lot. So you take, let's just say 20. So now he's a top half of the top 20. I mean, he's a good quarterback. Would I take him on my freaking Bears? Absolutely. But Yeah, but you also have Mitch. So. Exactly. So I, the thing is, is you just have to trust that your guys can go out and find him because would you rather pay one quarterback a fifth of the salary cap would you rather to, and let's just say he's an all-pro. Let's say he's a second-team all-pro every year. Would you rather pay one guy a fifth of your salary cap, or would you rather pay three guys a fifth of your salary cap and get three pro bowlers, three perennial pro bowlers? I'm going to take the second one. Uh, depends. Depends on who that one player is. If it's Patrick Mahomes, I'm taking Mahomes. But how many Patrick Mahomes, how many Tom Brady's are there? In Literally two. I mean, uh I, I would say three. I have to put Lamar in there. Okay, you could say Lamar, and then, like, we're talking just guys you would build a team around. You've those, got those three. I mean, I wouldn't build a team around Brady now, but. So you could say Mahomes. You could say Jackson. You could possibly, probably say Aaron Donald. Um, I don't. Okay, so, I mean, truthfully, let's just say if we're only talking quarterbacks, you're going to take those two guys. That's it. Yeah, I don't think another – I mean, there's a few rookie quarterbacks that might be something, but, I mean, one one quarterback to watch out for would be Kyler Murray. At the end of this season, he played very well, and once he kind of gets a little bit better, which I assume he will be this season, nope. that the Cardinals team with DeAndre Hopkins is nasty. Ooh -wee. I mean, Ooh -wee. if they have Christian Kirk – Fitzgerald, Indiana, Fitzgerald. Yeah. That's, uh, they have fast slot guys, and they have probably. I, I personally think he's the best wide right receiver in the game right now. And then Fitzgerald, which is, I mean, he's he's a top wide right receiver. He's old now, but he 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 is he does not age. He just know, doesn't. Wasn't Fitzgerald the guy that he didn't have a single drop a few seasons ago? And then Hopkins didn't have, he had like 102 catches without a drop like two Larry three seasons ago. Larry Fitzgerald, I believe, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I believe he's got something like less than like 15 
much for his career. Yeah, I, I so, so, so you have two wide receivers that do not drop the ball, and then you have two young, younger, fast speed guys, and then you have who's a running back over there? Uh, it's going to be Kenyon Drake now. Yeah, I'm not too. I don't like him too much. He played their okay in line is, their offensive line is a lot better, mm-hmm. a lot better this year. And I mean, truthfully, I I thought he was going to just absolutely royally suck, Ooh. but he he kind of proved me wrong. He kind of right. so so. Oh uh, yeah. Did you watch him in college at all? I again, I grew up literally 30 minutes away from where Kyler Murray mm-hmm. lit the world. Jared Allen. I mean, it, I saw him like in college, and I, I think a, another part of it, Hook'em Horns. I have to hate the Sooners. Like literally, nothing ever positive comes out of that crappy school. I mean, uh, they have three quarterbacks. I, I don't even they're quarterback know. I factory. I can't. They're not a quarterback factory. They are a transfer factory. Don't even hey, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. Hey, none of those guys would have made the first, first pick in Heisman without, without the OU. Without Lincoln Riley, you're absolutely right. You're you're yeah. absolutely right. Uh, I'm not an but, OU fan either. So, but but I, I think um, I think that they are a really good team to watch out. And team to watch. It's kind of funny because that's that kind of touches on our last thing, and we'll wrap it up. But, uh, I mean. Give us some 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 quick, not necessarily hot takes, but um, some things that you want to leave the viewers with and the listeners with in terms of guys that we need to watch out for, maybe a little hype, aren't hyped up enough, so on and so forth. One, I, I even though I I hate Dak, I think the Cowboys will win that division and actually Ooh, do, they're do going some to be good. They're going to be good this year. That they got out in Smith. From he just came out of rehab and he's everyone's saying he's looking good. So that's one person to look out for. Another thing, even though I'm a Patriots fan, I'm gonna say Cam Newton is gonna be exciting. I mean, just him being there. If Bill Belichick and him meshes well, I think it can be really deadly. I mean, if he goes, if he goes back to his 2008 season or 2018 season before he gets hurt. Then he's a. I mean, he was playing good. So between those, I can't really. The other team, like I was actually talking to my buddy earlier today, on who might make the Super Bowl, and the. We were talking about like the Bucks and the 49ers, and I think the 49ers beats the Bucks just because they can keep Brady off the field, and then they can attack Brady with an elite defense. So I kind of, I'm kind of leaning. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see another 49ers and Chiefs Super Bowl. Well, that's a hot take if I've heard one. I it's it is always. I don't. I don't necessarily like if that happens. I'm not going to be like, what in the world? But um, it's always hard for me to trust the defense that produced year over year over year. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's that's the valid. Because the there's, there's always a regression, and I mean, case in point, the Chicago Bears. I mean, case in point, I mean, uh, it, there's it, there's always a regression. Chicago's defense is still really good, though. Oh, the defense is still incredible, but um, I mean, do I think that a team of uh, so it's Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Jimmy Garoppolo, who are their other receivers? I oh. mean, truthfully. No good, good one place for the for the Eagles. Yeah, uh, I, I, I used mean, to. Let, they let they did. Look. They did get a new wide receiver. I just forgot who it was. They have Brandon Ayuk. I, I know that. And then um, he's their rookie out of Arizona State. De- oh, Debo Samuel. Completely oh, yeah. forgot about him. Completely forgot about him. That's not um, a huge upgrade. I mean, but, but uh, Jimmy so- Jimmy G has a lot of question marks too. Because he didn't, he really didn't do much last year. He, oh, they have Trent Williams. Total. I don't even know how I forgot. Oh, Jalen, get it. Jalen Hurd, uh, Travis Benjamin. Yeah, I mean, like they, they're, there's their offense of, leaves something to be desired. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of question marks. Exactly. But so that run def- I mean, that run game is still going to be there. It, exactly. You're exactly right. And that's um, what got him to the Super Bowl last year. So and it'll, and it'll be even better because of Trent. Um, oh yeah, Trent's gonna over, kill over, it over over uh, Joe Staley. But 
Um, I think, man, a, a team, I, I don't know, like, I know why I'm high on them, but I don't know why I'm high on them. And I don't think they're going to do anything crazy. In the AFC West, they're just going to get stopped by the Chiefs. Hold it's on. the Broncos. Hey, repeat that whole thing. So, another team that I'm pretty high on this year, I don't think that they're going to do incredible things because of the division they're in, but I'm high on the, on the Broncos. I really am. I think that this year they can be, I'm not saying amazing, no, but I think they could be pretty decent. Second year of, of Drew Locke, Court and Sutton together. Um, they got A.J. Bouye, they Casey, they got Melvin of course, they, of course, still have Vaughn. They have uh, Philip Lindsay. Shelby Harris is really good. Justin Simmons is incredible safety. Um, like, they got some good players. I mean, and get in Jerry. I mean, Luck has played pretty good whenever he played. I, I, and, uh, Sutton was a underrated wide receiver last year. Yep. He was destroying it and no one knew. Exactly. So, I, I'm, I'm pretty high on them again. I don't think any playoffs and shocking anybody, but um, I, I think the AFC, it's going to come uh, three teams that it did last year, and that's, well, take out the Titans. Um, you don't three think... teams. I don't... I, I can't be convinced that Ryan Tannehill is going to take a team in the AFC. Fair enough. No. Um, so I think it's going to come down to the Ravens, the Pats, and the Chiefs. Um, and then NFC wise, like I, I think you're gonna, you mentioned the Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys are gonna be freaking good. Like they just are. They're gonna be good. Um, as long as Dak plays good, that team's a team to beat. I mean, they've got a top two running back in the league. They've got the best. They've got the top three. They, their wide receiver trio is the best in the league, and that's you cannot argue that. The Mari. Uh, with Michael Gallup. Um, then you have tight end, who I think is going to be pretty Hold on, wait. Time out. You said that uh, Cowboys have the best wide receiver core in the NFL? The trio? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that beats the Bucks. Even, I mean, just... Who, who's that? I'm, I, I'm talking receivers. I didn't mention tight end. I'm no, I, like, I just feel like... I don't know who the Bucks' third wide receiver so you have, is. You have Godwin, great. Evans, great. And then their third guy is Scotty Miller. He was a, I think he's like five nine. I'm not exaggerating. Five nine, one seventy out of you. I I just feel like the talent with Evans and Godwin is better than because I don't. I, it might just be because I'm not higher on Amari Cooper. I don't think he's I'm, a good I'm wide not, receiver. I I think he's really good. I'm not like is he a top five receiver? No, but. Um, and, and I, I don't even know how I forgot about the Bucks. I, I think I could be talked off that ledge and say the Bucks possibly. Uh, I, I mean, I w- especially with Gronk. I mean, yeah, I, I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't trying to include Gronk because I don't know how he's going to play. He could be like he was two years ago, or he could be like he was five years ago. I think a year off. Typically, I think I was actually texting you this today. A year off always helps people. It does. Mm-hmm. In, in terms of just, I'm talking strictly from feeling body perspective. I mean, he was uh, bad too. Oh, he was jacked up, I know, with his knee, with his elbow. I mean, everything. So, um, but I, all that to say, I think the Cowboys are looking good. Um, I really do. I think they're going to roll with that division. The Eagles suck. And then I don't even think anybody cares about the Giants and what. Russians One know. thing with the Giants, I'm interested to see how the head coach play does. Um, uh, Joe, Joe Judge. Yeah, Joe Judge. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he's he's got. Um, I mean, it, the two the two um, most important positions, arguably, I wouldn't say two, That's... two of the most important positions in quarterback and running back. I mean, he's got two young guys that, that running backs are replaceable. Run, running backs are replaceable. They are, but he's got he's got a good running back in Saquon. You could argue great. And I think he's, he's got, the best. Yeah, exactly. Like he's got a really good running back, and then he's got a, a decent quarterback in Daniel Jones. And I, I, I always hold out. Uh, I always reserve and temper expectations and judgment 
rookie quarterbacks. It's, it's hard for me. I don't think that they're amazing, and I don't think they suck based off of what they do or don't do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. I don't think my Bears will be good, but that's neither here nor there. I don't think anyone cares about them. I'm laughing that we traded up for Metro Trubisky. Thank you so much, Ryan Pace. Hey, um, there's a good joke about that. It saved uh, okay. it saved the Bears five hundred million dollars. Exactly. So so there you go. That's a, that's a positive. But um, with that, I think we're done with episode one, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed it. That you uh, withstood this. I hope that you, uh, yeah, enjoyed it. I mean, this this is fun. I hope Gabe enjoyed it. That's all I got of for course. you. Of course. Um, got anything for him, Gabe? Nope. Have a good one. <laughs> Perfect. Y'all be good.